Ba. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Pig Pen. My name's Hog. I'm joined tonight by my beautiful wife, Piggy Two Step, and we are going to be uh, working on a demon. Hey, what's up? What's up? Well, you know, nothing much. Just holiday cheering. You know how it goes. I do. I made Beautiful. about three dozen gingerbread cookies yeah. for the first time. And I made some shortbread cookies with a strawberry jam filling. And I made some shortbread bars with a peach apricot filling. Oh, Mrs. Claus. And I made a, an almond pear tart. All for me. <laughs> I can't wait to enjoy getting big and hefty before the year ends. We don't call it the pig pen for nothing. That's right. We um, earned that title. You slop it up, okay? Yeah, I'm going to get you all earned it. Out. <laughs> so as usual, if you have any uh, questions or comments about whatever, anything, honestly, you can ask in the chat and uh, Kim will read it and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. I read everything everything yeah she's ron burgundy so <laughs> welcome uh i wanted to talk about just before we get started just because it's like right there and i i just saw it on twitter like a minute ago i cannot believe that that whole deal with art station is still ongoing like after all the back after like multiple professionals took their portfolios down i I can't imagine how much money they're actually making to keep AI as part of like the community. Like I don't understand how any of that stuff is not like affecting them at all. Like all of the backlash about it, like none of that's pushing them to make like a super strong decision against it. It's so weird. I don't get it at all. Like I don't think I've ever seen a site really stand against like their public like everybody who built up their platform in such a odd way like that it's like it feels so black and white but they're still pushing back like they haven't made a strong statement against having ai art on a website where it's primarily professional portfolios meant to attract companies, art directors, etc. for real work within the games industry. It's so strange. Like it's not a generalist platform where you can just kind of look. It's not Twitter where you see every kind of artwork in the world. Mm -hmm. It's a place where you're supposed to put up a portfolio and then be in front of multiple people that could potentially give you work. It's like, what's the point of the AI stuff? It's just recreational artwork it's like for nobody it's you know it's not like a real portfolio that lends itself to anything so it's so strange but i bring it up because i saw a post on art station where somebody said they actually had a little bit of conversation with them about it and even with all of the kind of silence around it that they've had or just the you know like they haven't said anything direct. Like they haven't said anything like we're against this. Mm -hmm. It's like the fact they haven't done that's crazy, but like apparently they are going to do something if this, you know, post is to be believed where they had a back and forth conversation with Art Station that they are going to make some sort of step in the direction of removing AI art. I don't know how. I don't know how you can be like like it's the same thing with that chat gpt homework stuff mm -hmm. like it's so funny to me it's like yeah the, we won't be accepting it but you can run papers and essays and reports all through a website called turn it in and it checks for plagiarism and they come up with low plagiarism so it's you just can't, like how can you tell yeah. other than like, all of a sudden this person is doing amazing <laughs> yeah and they somebody who stinks is suddenly great mm -hmm. it's like other than that it's like how can you like how can you tell all of a sudden this person is an expert on yeah. world war ii right it's like how can you tell it's ai art yeah it's it's so weird to me like i don't know how they're going to do that but that was what at least i read somebody was saying that that's a thing that they're going to kind of look out for and i don't know i i honestly don't know how you do that 
how you police that in an effective way. But apparently that's a thing. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, JRAM had brought up a, a point, which we've talked about. I don't know if we talked about it on here, but we've talked about it together. Our sure. station has probably already signed deals on their data sets. Like, they may be getting paid. Oh, I know. That's the only thing that makes sense, is them mm -hmm. getting paid. Like, you wouldn't do this to your your whole community. It's the only reason you exist, yeah. is all these artists. You wouldn't just abandon all these artists for no reason. Right. It has to be because of money. Like, so many of yeah. the big people on ArtStation have been removing their portfolios. You know what they say, right? Oh, <laughs> something stupid. <laughs> no money, no problem. <laughs> What were you saying? Mo money, mo problems. It's true. Um, but it is crazy. It's like, it, it, unless they were like hemorrhaging cash and this was like the only thing that's safe. <laughs> like, yeah. And that's something what? they have to do. Yeah, because, they don't have to do it. Yeah, it's just really strange to me. Like, you can't have both of these things existing at the same time. It'd be time. crazy. They're what? raising this money than to donate to the cause to fight against AI. <laughs> <laughs> so AI is paying for their own like case against them? Yeah, I don't think they're that altruistic. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be the case at all. <laughs> um, young Turkish man said, Hi, Dave and Kim. I like this guy you are drawing. I like his eyes. Vaguely skeleton-like. I can appreciate that. Thanks. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Um, Robin okay. Bandit does have a question. How often did you study when you first got serious? And what study process did you come up with now after all these years? Uh, now uh, it's more of like a reference thing where I don't follow a direct reference. I tend to follow kind of like vague reference. So like for this, I'll look at like this whole sketch I did, like this big image here. It's just me playing with style. Like I didn't have a clear cut idea of what I was doing when I did this. I was just playing with Krita and brushes and stuff. But uh, when I go in and do kind of the final render where everything needs to look realistic and nice, I I will look at like movie makeup. Mm -hmm. So creatures from horror films and stuff that had really nice makeup. I'll look at that. Yeah, but that's about it. And nothing that looks like this, just texturally how that stuff catches light. That sort of thing is kind of what I reference, but in terms of direct studies, I I kind of hide a lot of things in each piece that I do because I don't really have a whole lot of time to do dedicated studies of like one image. So if I'm trying to study like anatomy or something like that, I do a lot of that in like comic work or I do a lot of that in my sketches of things and I'll reference images. I don't think images. you mean hide it. You like incorporate it. Well, I just mean that I'm not posting a study. Oh, yeah. I'm not posting like, here's my, I took the time to just do a study to only learn. It's also part of an illustration. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of what I mean by hiding it. It's, like, it's just not obvious that that's what I'm doing. Um, Cracky said that art station just said they are removing the anti, I don't know why I said removing like that. They are removing, they're removing the anti-AI protest, uh, protest post, actually. I saw that, but that's that's kind of uh, what I was talking about, was like, like that they're saying that, but I think they're also trying to, if I gave them the benefit of the doubt, I would say I think that they're doing that because they have some measures in place that they're hoping to enforce against AI to make people feel better. But I really think it's just gonna be too little too late. They're trying to clean up their site so that it's still usable and not just people protesting the website, which is very stupid. Apparently people are trying to copyright prompts. Oh my God, yeah. I'm, I'm sure. What? I'm, it's that same meme of the I dude like putting on that. the clown paint saying like, you know, a art is just whatever. It's just a, it's the same thing as artists being inspired, and then it eventually gets down to them <laughs> being like, "Wait a second! I spent all that time coming up with that prompt. That's mine. Yeah. You can't take my prompt it's, and then make images like a me." Lot of work. It's like Jesus Christ, you morons. 
Um, Riley says, I saw a thing where some CGM instructor said he was teaching students AI tools, and it's like, oh, you're teaching them how to string 20 words together and fix a few hands. <laughs> I mean, it's very dumb. Like, the... It's... People are trying to cash in. It's really hard because there are parallels of things that have happened in the past that you can point to. Like, there was a whole debate around this with uh, photo manipulation years ago, where, I mean, I don't know if that's still a debate that goes on, but back when I got into everything, like, there were the quote-unquote real artists, mm -hmm. and then there were the artists that used photos and then painted on top of them. Mm -hmm. And there was this weird kind of back and forth on the utility of that and the morality around it, like everything that's happening right now with AI. Obviously, AI is way more predatory and it's a different thing entirely. But it's not the first time there's been something like this where it's just you know, getting something out as quick as possible for the idea and then doing the rendered thing after the fact. That's like the real painted work. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's strange to teach that because I do think that there's going to be, like if they do a thing where the work is gathered, what would I say? If they did something where there wasn't as much kind of theft in it, mm -hmm. basically, if they did something where you got the work legally mm -hmm. because it was part of a package that was meant to train the AI art, AI art that was purchased from artists, mm -hmm. that's a different story. In that universe, I get where AI could then be a part of the pipeline where you use it to generate basic ideas to pitch things. Like I've said this before, like I see that use for it. but. In terms of how people are using it, like right now, you wouldn't teach that because it's based off of the stolen work of everybody else. Mm -hmm. It's like you're teaching, like, like a not cri a potential future criminal charge. Like <laughs> I mean, in all reality, some of that AI AI art gets so close to the images that mm -hmm. they're borrowing from that you uh, yeah. could have that they're inspired a case from. Against it. <laughs> inspired, <laughs> but it's just like at the moment you can't be teaching with the current tool set. Well, Wesley Edwards Art says, have you seen people are using AI art to sell as reference packs now on uh, ArtStation? <laughs> yes, I have. It's there you go. Hilarious. Um, Your reference, bad reference. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. what? Um, Ned Zex says, can you show how to use that Chrome brush and Krita? I tried it and it's weird. I couldn't use it well. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now, but on Patreon, I have a little bit about how I use that brush in the past process videos I've put up, so you can check that out, but I just wanted to make sure that I'm working on stuff during this stream, because I want to get more paintings done and keep building out this style, but most of the that brush in Krita is you know, trial and error. Like you just have to continually use it because I wasn't great at using it at first, but I see major benefits in it now. And I've been using it for like a few months. At first I was doing kind of like inking work was the best I got out of it. But now I can do full like paintings using it. It's mm -hmm. just a weird way of thinking about painting, I guess. Um, Rye Guts says, Hey Dave and Kim, been fans of both of yours for years. Hey. A fan of me? Thank you. <laughs> Just join the Patreon this An month. An OnlyFan, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you found my, my well, you know, I hope you're not paying for somebody who's pretending to be me on OnlyFans because I'm not getting that money. <laughs> Just join the Patreon this month and now breaking my chat cherry. That is all. Welcome. Hey. Thank you and for joining the Patreon. Um, Cause says, the issues in art community during these past months sucks. But man, am I glad to see the art community joining together and alive more than ever. Yeah, it's nice that people are, I mean, there's there's been a lot of things that were kind of gray areas for me in the past. Although it is also- I don't like jump in on everything. It is also very dividing because there are people who are in the art community who are very for AI. Less though, way there are, less. There are fewer people for it, but 
it's, it can be dividing. Well, like what was happening with NFTs was something that was divisive, but mm -hmm. there were a lot more artists in favor of it than there are, you know, people in favor of this AI, AI art. It's like this stuff is way worse and it's less obvious in this instance, like, you know, I mean, I would say it's more obvious, actually. I didn't mean to say that. It's more obvious what the yeah. problem is with this. It was less obvious with the NFT thing because people could so make unknown. arguments of like, I'm a dirt poor artist. Like, this is I the mean, only yeah. way I can make money. Like, mm -hmm. I have an opportunity right now to create, a, you know, I can put a fucking picture of a, <laughs> a, a kuntash and like a fucking palm tree on a laser grid and create an it's image and fucking blender in two seconds and then sell it for $10,000. It's like so hard yeah. for them to not do that. Um, like I get that completely. Penix Inc. also said that it's like NFTs before. I just didn't get to that part yet, but they, but think, they are on the same page. But I think with the NFT thing, it was just, you know, not, not so straight up. It's like this one is just theft. It's like, we had no say in them taking the artwork and then they just did it. Mm -hmm. So it's, you, you can't do that. Again, comes, I mean, we just said this last time, it just comes down to the same idea of sampling, sampling music. <laughs> it's like, you can't just sample any old thing. Like we need, until we live in a world where money <laughs> isn't a part of your life. Yeah. It's like, then you need protections. Where this is not just a thing that you did for fun. This is how you make a living. Yeah. It's like, because if there's no protection for artists, then what, you know, I mean, and it's not the necessity for artists isn't going to go away. It's just going to be so much harder for people to get that first foothold and start making a career for themselves because all of the AI, AI art is going to exist within those smaller scale game companies and things that are going to be hiring artists starting out. I That's wonder if they're going to the try to thing. make the argument that it's a form of fan art, but instead of being a fan of like you making Ninja Turtle stuff, that they're a fan of the art that you made or that it's like a parody and try and get around it in some way. Like, oh, you know, this isn't, it's not theft. It's a parody of what you did because it was inspired by you. I don't think it's that. I've, I've seen a thing where they talked about like why legally this is going to be very murky. Mm -hmm. And I think it had to do with the, I, I could be completely wrong on this, so don't take this as gospel, but. I, everything you say to me is gospel. Well, yeah, it's because this is a church. <laughs> um, but they were saying basically that the AI takes in kind of, or like learns from the images, but doesn't store them or something. So it's not like they're there as like evidence that this is what they used. Like, I don't know if that's what they mean by that, but it was something like- That's so interesting, but you like can it tell what it's inspired from. Yeah, exactly. Like if you look at some of the examples people posted of like Mickey Mouse standing in a certain pose, and then you mm -hmm. ask the AI to give you Mickey Mouse <laughs> doing something in whatever style, it's like you can find the root image of it. Mm. Um, Andres says hello brother how do you render like that it looks so good <laughs> just a general question <laughs> thanks uh just a lot of studying early on with lighting and whatever I mean, that's it i thought you were gonna do that uh dj khaled <laughs> like kind of answer just a lot of painting <laughs> yeah just that's, paint a lot just paint a lot just eating a lot <laughs> Eric how'd you gain all the weight <laughs> oh just he goes you know just... he goes I want the nice car. I want the nice house. I want the expensive watches. <laughs> and what's his name? The interviewer? A Larry King. He goes, how'd you gain all the weight? Uh, just eating a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best how'd you, thing to say after that. How do you render like... TJ Khaled trying to be inspirational. <laughs> how'd you gain all the weight? <laughs> just eating a lot. <laughs> You should watch that clip. It's my favorite one. I watch it all the time. Um, Eric Ravola says, hey, Dave, what would you say is the ideal balance for a concept art portfolio when trying to hit the balance of aiming for target companies, show unique vision, and also display your own personality? So you're trying to get target companies. You're trying to show that you're unique and your own personality, uh, like your own style, I'm sure, or what you like. Yeah. 
I think you can, I always think you can kind of get a lot done with one project. This is a bad example. I mean, I can adapt it. Like, let's say you do Cyberpunk 2077, right? Like, what would I do with Cyberpunk 2077 as like an example portfolio? Like, if mm -hmm. you put up the, your own version of that universe through through your eyes, like a revisionist kind of look, mm -hmm. and be like, this is what I would have done had I been brought on to this project. Like, I would have taken this hero character and then do some iterations on the design. Be like, draw a version of their thing, but just draw like multiple design ideas of a, or maybe even like a new main character or, you know, like let's say you envision an expansion on the game then you can put in all of your cool weird ideas or just different ideas that aren't completely obvious to what they've already done in that universe mm -hmm. and then just expand that way so it's something that has like a foothold and in, in, you know like a, a point of reference where an art director can see like they already know that you go, you're going to be able to fit a certain aesthetic so it's like you're adaptable to whatever game world they give you. Mm. Plus you have all of these unique ideas on top of that that can not only are they yours, but they, they make sense within the world. Stuff like that I always find to be very appropriate for like a portfolio because it shows that you can think with it. You can be creative within constraints like that. And uh, you don't have to do that. But I would say like as far as a balance of all of it, that feels like that to me and then on top of that you could have just your own universe of concepts but it is nice like one of the benefits of having fan art which is much more accepted now than it was in the past but it, it's that somebody has a point of reference looking at it mm -hmm. that they know like what you're going for with it they know what that universe looks like they know what that character looks like so seeing your interpretation of that helps give them an idea of like who you are because they're like oh that's your thing like mm -hmm. you took a, something i know and you made it different in whatever way that sort of thing is is helpful i think just in terms of displaying your skill but yeah so this says dave I started doing a goblin challenge, and my first idea was doing a bat goblin hybrid. And literally, and literally one day later, you posted your bat goblin. <laughs> Question: Are you in my walls? I am in your walls. <laughs> um, young Turkish man says, "I was wondering, Dave, what you tend to draw when you find yourself doodling, like drawing in the margins of a paper or having a random uh, blank canvas opportunity, restaurant tablecloth pa uh, paper, etc." That's oh. a good question, actually. All of those are jokes. Yeah, it's always, I had a grocery list and Dave drew a guy that was a penis. <laughs> and, and then my, my oldest was like, what's that? And I was like, it's just a guy that... Hey, it wasn't just a guy, it was a penis. It was a Hellraiser type monster. <laughs> it was like Freddy Krueger coming out of a, you know, like yeah. the neck penis mm -hmm. head and then balls and stuff. It was and, horrible. Yeah. That or That's, like... Those are most of my... <laughs> ideas if our kids are around it's usually a pig because that's what they always ask for but lately axel's been asking for venom yeah venom is the new chill out and draw mm -hmm. i actually draw venom a lot there's a couple characters where if i have nothing else going on i'll just sketch them and that's like you know ghost rider venom wolverine yeah no way I like Cookie says that um, there's a TikTok lawyer or a lawyer in TikTok, yeah. maybe not a TikTok lawyer, um, explaining <laughs> that people have been trying to copyright their AI work, but they've been getting rejected by the copyright offices. That's insane. I mean, it's not like then it shouldn't be weird to them that artists want protection. Like the AI people, they, they always come back and they're like, you for forever, you've gatekeeped creativity. Mm. And now, now that we have a chance to rise above those elitists, we should be given the same rights. It's like, no, you're dorks. You don't get to just become artists because <laughs> you have some dumb technology. It's like, shut up. Like, Can you, you imagine if they were in court and Allura was like, you're dorks. <laughs> you don't get your honor. 
these guys are dorks. <laughs> they <laughs> shouldn't guys? have rights. But it, but it's like this, and to me, I know it's not the same, but to me, it's the same thing as being like, I'm trying to copyright my Mario Maker level that I made. I made Mario. Uh, I <laughs> This is my IP. I don't know why I'm not protected. Mm-hmm. This is my famous Mario Maker level, and you can't, you can't make them anymore because mine's the best one. It's like, it's just a, you know, it's just a fun piece of technology. Like, I, I don't even have anything against that, you know, side of just making stuff for fun or whatever. But, like, copywriting it is so dumb. Um, Rudolph the Snoop-Nosed Skunch says, when you post any vehicle and mech drawings you've done, I believe you mentioned doing some of that work last stream. Uh, I've done a lot of that, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's funny. I actually did a, um, uh, I had a meeting last night where uh, I was talking to some people and they were like, do you have a lot of experience doing like concept art because your portfolio doesn't really show that? And I'm like, yes. Like, I don't know why I never post that stuff or I don't know. It's like, but I've done a lot of that. I actually designed um, the turtle van in the uh, Ninja Turtles movie. <laughs> I did a bunch of drawings of that thing in motion, yeah. doing a bunch of technical moves and stuff. Uh, but I've done a bunch of a bunch of that kind of design in video games. You know, like for the current game I'm on, I don't know how many pieces of concept art I've done. Maybe like over 300 or like <laughs> something crazy. I don't know, but a lot of that is that and. Yeah, it's just when I'm left to my own devices, I do shit like this. But I have no problem drawing all that. I mean, that came from doing comics. If you want to see some of that, which isn't a great example of it, but I did the Destiny comics, mm -hmm. and that's like 60 or so pages of, you know, designs of spaceships and all kinds of mech-looking people and robots and guns and, you know, mm -hmm. very articulate, crazy detail. Chris Adoro says, how do you draw for long hours? I get about four and then I take a long break. You just have more willpower than you. <laughs> <laughs> what? You just have more strength. I just want it more. <laughs> I just want to draw more. No, uh, it's, it's just that I'm used to it. I just do it a lot. I've just been painting a lot. <laughs> I mean, in all reality, it is that. It is yeah. that I just sit here and I make myself do stuff. I have a set amount of time that I work and that's I'm working that whole time and that that's really it I just uh, try to stay very disciplined about it yeah I just want it more um J Ram said fan of Kim I hope they're not mixing you up with Amy who is rotting in the ground <laughs> and I like cookie said bro what <laughs> 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 yeah she's gone get her out of here <laughs> Um, somebody had somebody had called me Amy. For for those of you who are not coming from the Patreon, who are coming from Instagram or Twitter, I yeah. help with Dave's Q and A's on Patreon. And somebody said Dave, Amy, which yeah. I don't know how they got my name to be Amy, but we just go with it. Um, stop talking. Stop stalking me, bro. Says. Dave, what would you do if you met an AI prompter in person? Someone who specifically uses your style and genuinely thinks they're an artist. I'd probably beat them up. That's what they said. Uh, I'm not like, this is probably a boring answer to that. I'm not like that opposed to those people because they don't know. Like they don't get why it's fucked up. I never knew that a painting took as long as it did until I met Dave. Like, you don't even understand, as somebody who's not around that or in that world, like, how much effort goes into it. I think you understand that it's hard if you try and you're like, I can't do this. But I don't even think you understand how time-consuming. And Dave is fast, and it still can take, like, a week or something to, to finish a painting. And, like, that's a week of work that you're taking away by just using it or something, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I just don't think that those people are coming at it from that angle. Like, they don't know. It's like, so I don't really hold it against them. They're just naive. So if somebody came up to me and they were like, I'm an artist too, I'd probably laugh at them. Just because I, I don't know, I, I just would laugh at that because it's funny. Mm -hmm. But 
I wouldn't, I wouldn't attack them. <laughs> Take off my shoe and start beating them. Um, Cracky says the artists who are in favor of AI believe it to be a great tool for artists without seeing the immorality of the stolen work or the sooner than expected repercussions of AIs. Uh, yeah, again, kind of what Dave was saying, they just don't know. I don't even think they understand. It's like, I think that some people are like, I'm really getting away with something. But I honestly think that most of it is out of ignorance of just being like, I don't see what's wrong with this. Like, I don't understand that, that this is something that's wrong. And then you get called out for it and you're like, I'm not doing something wrong. And then you get called out for it again. And then you're like, am I doing something wrong? People are really bringing this up, but I've been like really successful doing it. So I'm not going to stop. Yeah. And then you just get into this like rabbit hole of stuff. I mean, this is the other thing. You can see a lot of like rip offs of things. Like here's like a mainstream brand. Like Steve Madden is a mainstream brand. They rip off big brands like they rip off Versace designs and they rip off like little things and 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 they're a cheaper quality but it's, like yeah, same thing with like car companies yeah it happens all the time but it's more accessible Steve Madden is a more accessible brand and somehow they get away with it and I don't know how I don't know the, the details of it but it like happens in really big brands this is like the art community is small compared to like Versace <laughs> compared to Steve Madden you know it's not like a public thing. So, I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. But, but... it's also not that it, the, the difference being that people aren't literally taking the designs from other places and then feeding it into an AI yeah. and then directly taking it. It's, right. it's just they're copying it. Yes, they are copying it. But it's not the same as that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Great White Sufi says, I really like the design of this monster, but it looks like he's doing the sad pouty face. Yeah, that's what I was going for. <laughs> um, Riley says, if you're an artist who wants to use AI for everything, I just feel like you have to be really jaded. Like you really don't want to make your art, make art in your art job anymore. Um, yeah, I guess if that's like, but I don't think that, I mean, maybe I'm completely out of touch, but I imagine that like, the majority of people who are artists, as in like you guys who paint and draw and do everything and not use AI, are not then going to AI. Cause that's, that's, I feel like everyone's kind of against it. Like you said, like there's a very few, very few people who are like. Well, I, I talked to, this happened to me a long time ago when I first got started. I talked to an artist and I remember this conversation very vividly because it was just it was they made an assumption and it bothered me and it's something that i've never agreed with and still don't <laughs> like I'm, I'm not like there was no part of it where i just went oh you're right but this artist i was talking to them and i went i said oh i thought you painted like i saw their process that i was talking to them i was i said i thought you painted like straight up from you know reference maybe but i was like but i didn't know that you were just painting over photos and just submitting them to like wizards of the coast and stuff i was like that feels very that feels jaded to me mm -hmm. and um uh, they told me they were they said oh believe me you're gonna get it after years of doing this and making this work you're just gonna want to be like fuck it i'm just gonna paint over a photo and mm -hmm. send it in and i was like i will never do that yeah, that's how you And I was like, because too. I actually want to get better at what yeah. I'm doing and I don't want to rely on this crutch. And I enjoy the work and the process so much that I want to keep learning. Can it's like, you? I wouldn't just do it. Like, then I'm just working any job. Then I'm just working anywhere and I'm working at but Best even, Buy. Okay, let's like, say. I'm just doing a thing. Can you imagine uh, in my job as a nurse, if I was like charting something and I was like, patient is alert and oriented. <laughs> But like they had a stroke and they're obviously not alert and oriented, they're confused, but I'm like, oh, when you've been doing it this long, you, you'll see. You just don't even want to go look at the patient anymore. You just put in whatever you want. Like how insane is that? That's yeah. so insane. Like you just stop doing your job. You stop caring about it. Like it, it was just, I, I've had that conversation, unfortunately, with like a decent amount of people in not that same way, but similar. in similar situations. And it's always made me sad 
because mm -hmm. I always, in some way or another, I like the person I'm talking to. And then I have that conversation. I just think like, oh, like it always in my mind comes from a place of just being tired mm -hmm. of working and tired of making stuff. And you just kind of forget why you started doing it in the first place. You know, when you're really tired and you start making bad decisions, <laughs> you're like, I yeah. should eat a cookie. It's 2 a.m. I'm, I'm really hungry. It's like that, but like on a bigger level. Yeah, it's just kind of throwing in the towel and being like, whatever mm -hmm. like I I don't know because I look back at when I was a kid and I'm like if I had the opportunity to do the things I'm doing now like I, I would be hating me if I didn't go cuts. all out yeah and try to make the best of it it's like yeah, well you I have agree. this opportunity and you you're getting paid to like learn and grow and challenge yourself with really cool and interesting things but you can so easily throw in the towel and just be like ah whatever fuck it so I get that some hmm. people are going to you know use it for that um, cold run Herschel says UK law states that you can scrape data but for research only the moment you sell anything related to research you're in hot water yeah I mean you should be it's, if you're just literally taking stuff you should absolutely have some kind of consequence especially if you're going to use it for commercial purposes it's like mm -hmm. come on it's um, pretty obvious santana art asks how do i get the mentality to draw every day like you um like you did when you were starting and what do you recommend to draw on a daily basis uh when you're just drawing draw things that you want to do you know just enjoy your work but uh when you're trying to get better you know have targeted goals we talked about that on the last stream if you want to check that out the the gist of it being you got leg day at the gym some days you work on arms mm -hmm. some days it's core or whatever yeah it's like don't, you, don't try to do everything yeah make it Focus. something that you know that you'll be able to accomplish and set out to do that don't give yourself unrealistic goals things that you're gonna feel down on yourself for if you don't do and if you can check something off your to-do list every day like, okay i did my daily drawing exercises mm -hmm. then that's you know On one to step thing. towards being a better artist but it's going to take a long time and you just have to be consistent that's that's really it mm -hmm. um mecca bouncy bunny says love your paintings dave wish i wasn't colorblind <laughs> <laughs> marco straka says hey dave Hey, Kim, what's up with Dan? <laughs> what's he doing these days? I miss his dark humor on Twitch streams. Uh, um, he's doing good. We're, uh, he... we're going to do the stream for Mousetrap in not too long. Yeah, next days. week sometime. And um, he's been working. He's been working on getting his house built. He's been just doing a lot. He was getting, um, he was helping his family build this like restaurant he's been yeah dan's been doing a he's decent been amount of things cooking thanksgiving feasts <laughs> <Yeah>, 30 <laughs> he's been days. making lots of lasagna um 30 yeah. days of feasts um chatan ranjan says i saw on art station that people are posting discord link i think that server owner can make money through discord and if this is true then it is not making money off of artists misery question mark i don't know i don't know what that means yeah like, i'm not sure what can, you mean by that i'm not really sure if that's like on art station people are i don't understand what that means um ned asks how much time do you spend to make one illustration for magic the gathering card for magic i probably spend i probably spend like what uh, maybe 12 hours. I don't know. Less. I'm pretty quick with those. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I probably spend like, let's just call it between like 8 and 12. And then when it comes to like mad, like Marvel covers, I probably spend 5 hours, 4 to 5. Um. Jet Set to Anywhere says, is there a chance we could get a pic of your bookshelf? I always like seeing what artists have. 
Also, would you ever consider opening a P.O. box? I think a P.O. box is in the future once we, once we have buy a house. Home. Because once we buy a house and have the space for a studio and potentially like putting our own prints out rather than using like a third party, then we would need obviously a return address that is not our home. So yeah, it's in the future. Yeah, and we uh, don't have all the stuff out of storage. So there's a ton of books that are just sitting in our storage. Oh, I forgot storage. the books are in storage too. We still yeah. have some like some of our like limited prints like two of, of an image or something like that you know yeah or like four of an image um cold run herschel says i'm using 12 inch display tab but it seems to me that it's too small for me to work i'm thinking of swapping back to non-screen one uh is this only me or is this the case with you too uh, well, I'm using a Cintiq right now, so I, I went for the biggest one. I'm using the 32 Pro. I've used the, the regular like Intuos tablets, the ones without the screen. I'm not, I'm not crazy about those in comparison to this. I think that this Cintiq is better overall. Mm -hmm. I remember feeling Back when I first used a Cintiq, I wasn't crazy about them, but they got a lot better. And I think now all the screen tablets are just superior to me anyway. It's not everybody. Some people like that you, you know, don't see your, your hand. Your hand isn't in the way. Yeah, like that sort of stuff. Like I get it. Like a lot of people I know, I think mm -hmm. uh, Wes Burt, if you're familiar with uh, Wes's work, uh, he uses a into us tablet and you know creates the highest level work you can make <laughs> so yeah it's not like you, it's a bad option there's plenty of people who use that very effectively in their work um oh so good says what advice do you would you give to someone starting out now with air everywhere just keep making stuff and keep trying to improve yourself. A I don't believe AIR AI is going to replace... It has to be... I have to stop saying AI art. It's hard. I don't huh? know why it's so hard to say that. Because <laughs> it's hard to say it fast. But um, I don't think it's going to replace everybody. I do think there's going to be legislation that gets put in place or something that's going to make it less of a nuisance it barely even ha like it's barely even really taken off i feel like and there's already you know something like building up against it i don't i don't know what to call it whatever the group of people are that are yeah the like, concept it. art team um just join the stream have you guys discussed the concept art association fundraiser we have not discussed it yet dave and i have discussed it off camera yeah that um, that's uh yeah i donated to it the other day and I I definitely suggest anybody who's interested in having somebody fight on our behalf that you donate because they're gonna need the money mm -hmm. so yeah go check it out the concept art association yeah and I know we talked about doing a stream potentially to raise money for it um, we're still working that out yeah we didn't plan for it just yet just because yeah. it's the holidays and we got we're doing a bunch of other stuff um and also we i mean this is the other thing when you guys mention something just know that we're not like scraping to figure out what's going to happen next week and we need ideas typically we have like almost a month planned ahead so like we we generally know what we're going to do next month so if you don't see your idea it's not that we're not listening it's that it, it's getting backlogged. <laughs> There's just a lot that we have already planned just to make our lives a little bit more structured and scheduled and easy to like flow into work. Um, Frankie says, Frankie Perez says, is the right move to delete our art station? I've been on limbo for a while about it. I don't know. I'm kind of up in the air on it. I want to see what their final stance is on everything. I don't want to just you know, throw the baby out with the bathwater. I, I don't want it. I, I don't want to be the same thing I hate, which I, I really don't like, you know, a whole witch hunt. I really don't like just emotional responses. Mm -hmm. That stuff I think is very easy 
and uh, I don't want to just think that they're bad people making the wrong decision, but we'll see. I mean, I want to see what they're coming out with next. That thing I talked about earlier in the stream where somebody had, uh, I actually posted on Twitter if you want to check it out. There's uh, um, this post that was put up. It's on the trending page right now talking about an email exchange they had with ArtStation where ArtStation is apparently taking some sort of move against AIR, but we'll see. Who knows? It's probably going to be not enough, <laughs> if I'm guessing, yeah. off of their current trend. Orvain says, I will never live down that Amy comment. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I mean, you don't actually personally know me, so I'm not insulted. <laughs> I was telling my mom the other night, I was talking to her on the phone, and I was like, Someone who's known me for the entirety of my relationship with Dave called me Kay. And I was like, that's definitely not my name. And it just felt really catty. And Dave was like, let me remind you that they didn't remember their own name <laughs> for like two days. And I was like, all right, I'm not that mad anymore. <laughs> yeah, the context <laughs> matters. Kim was like, you know, it was really like, she definitely knows my name. I you was can't like, pretend this, that you don't know well, my it name. Well, was, it was another female, and I was like, that's really catty to be like around me for a decade and be like, oh, what's your name? Kind of like, it just, it's, it comes across as really catty when until, a girl does that to another girl. Until you find out that, that they she's just a how huge to write their name. dummy. <laughs> they forgot how, their, how to write their name and had a mental breakdown. About it. In her twenties, in her else. early twenties, <laughs> themselves. Oh, and I was like, I was like, so you know, there's yeah. a little bit there. <laughs> um. So, so this says it's so funny how they call themselves prompt engineers <laughs> when you have actual engineers who go to school for like four years. Why not aim higher and call yourself a prompt doctor or a prompt surgeon? <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. What's really funny to me, like the parallel I keep drawing with all this is with just theft. Like I was a thief. I stole stuff all the time. Like that's part of the reason <laughs> that I'm doing art professionally now is mm -hmm. because I was just put in a corner and I needed to decide on a career that hopefully wouldn't involve me having people check my record all the time, which I don't have a record right now, so it doesn't matter. But like, that was my fear at the time. Mm -hmm. But I remember when I was young and I thought that what I was doing wasn't that bad. That's what all this stuff feels like to me. It feels like people finding a way to legitimize stealing. Mm -hmm. It's like, I get that you enjoy doing it and it's so easy to do. It's like, but it's still wrong no matter how good it feels. Mm -hmm. Like you can try to say that it's not that bad for whatever excuse you can come up with. But, but it's black and white theft. <laughs> that I should chase what makes me happy. <laughs> and stealing makes me happy. <laughs> but it's it's like, it's so much that for me. It's like people just finding any way to be like, but I like it. And it's like, I get that you're really stretching these arguments because you need this to stick around because you like it so much. It's like, but just because you really enjoy a thing doesn't mean it's right. Um, the rail says, any tips for increasing speed? I feel like it takes me longer than it should to produce presentable sketches, let alone finished pieces. No, it's just <laughs> consistency. I mean, it, it it's sounds just, I'm, funny. I'm laughing because almost every answer is like, just do it a lot. I just draw a lot. <laughs> like, that's what we've just been saying. It's because it's the most inconvenient thing to hear. Nobody wants to hear that it's a matter of work. They want to hear that there's some way to do it that's going to speed it up. Mm -hmm. And I'd never want to dissuade people into thinking that this is easier than it. Because then if you don't get that result, if, if I were to lie to you and just say that, oh, just follow these 10 simple steps right. to get shredded abs, it's like, you're gonna feel like you failed somehow. If you actually did the bullshit that I would say if I were one of those people trying to sell you something, mm -hmm. then you'd be so bummed. Like you'd be like, what's wrong with me? What did I do wrong? Whatever, it's like, no, you just have to do it all the time. 
It has to be a regular part of your life. Like I'm where I'm at right now in my career because I've been doing it every day for 17 years or whatever. It's like, that's just the reality of it. That's the only reason I'm fast. It's like I stuck to, like I challenge myself a lot. If I'm really bad at drawing, I draw then. I do mm -hmm. comics, I do something where the focus is drawing. And that's, I make that my new career. If I suck at doing, you know, if I, if I feel like I'm straying too far from the kind of realism stuff and I've been doing too much comic things and simplified whatever and I'm losing my grasp of forms and values, then I come back to doing stuff like this. Mm -hmm. But it's a balancing act and it's something that you constantly work at and with each thing that you take on, everything new that you learn, you get better, you get faster, you become more efficient, especially if you're challenging yourself and working on difficult problems. I think that it's interesting to like hold this career to a different standard because if you, if I were asking somebody that like, how do I become a better nurse? I, I can't, like I've already graduated, I've already become a nurse, I took the NCLEX, I've worked in an ICU, how do I become a better nurse? Like, you just need exposure. You need the practice. You need time. And, like, you wouldn't tell me anything different. And it's very hard to measure something, like, measure the progression of something when you're doing it every single day. But I think you shouldn't compare yourself to yesterday. I think you should look at yourself, like, a year ago, you know? Right. That's it, where you're going to see the most growth. And then you will yeah, see. You, and if you, you won't feel, even notice, really, like, it, that you're improving. If in one year you think you haven't learned one single thing, there has been no change, you have not sped up, you have not, you know, gotten better doing whatever you're doing, I mean, maybe then you should reevaluate how you're studying or how you're working. But I honestly think that it's, it's one of those things, like, if you do it every day and then you're looking at yourself a year ago, you're like, I couldn't have done this in let's say a day, I couldn't have done this in a couple hours, I couldn't, whatever it is, you know? I couldn't draw yeah. hands before and now I can. Like, you have to see what your progression really is and where you stand before you can measure yourself against other people ever. But doing, doing something is better than doing nothing. Mm -hmm. If you feel like you're procrastinating because you don't know if you're doing the right thing. Or because you're like, I'm gonna just, it's too. just gonna take so long. It's just, I'm yeah. so slow at this. It's like, that's not the way to do it. Yeah, like the thing that I kind of, go back to with studying was like back when I started studying a lot, I had a, I had a lot of people who are the same people that tell you like, oh, you're not very good at X, Y, and Z. Maybe you shouldn't like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's wrong. Like the way you did that's wrong. It's like, yeah, cause I just started. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> it's like, that's like, you have to go through that and it's okay to feel that way. Like I studied wrong, wrong, I'm, you know, air quotes like all the time, but you just keep doing the stuff and mm -hmm. you'll figure it out. And you'll, if you're actively pursuing it, you're going to seek out resources. You're going to see how other people do it and start to understand your own pitfalls. Mm -hmm. But if you go like, I need to know what I'm doing before I get started. Fuck that, don't do that. I, I would do studies and people would correct me on things and at least I was arrogant enough at the time to be like, I know what I'm doing, whatever. Like, <laughs> I'm not gonna listen. Like, I get that you're afraid of failure or something, yeah. but I'm not, I it's want to It's people needing fail. control over everything else. It's the, it's the mom who's like, you can't do that because that's, you're messy. Right. Like, I, I'll do it, I'll just do it for you. Well, then how are they supposed to get better? Unless they learn. Yeah, and like you just keep doing things and you keep on Sorry. fucking up and you keep on correcting course. And then over time you get better and better and better. And But like I, I'm honestly telling you that when I studied live, because I did it on a stream like this, people would be in the chat like, you know, saying whatever occasionally. Not, not everybody, because it was rare. It was a rare comment, but you hold on to negative comments. Mm -hmm. And I would see those ones and be like, I'm doing something wrong here. Like if it stood up, if it stood out to me as legitimate criticism and I thought about it a lot, then it's probably true. But even though it's true, it doesn't mean I should stop because doing something in the right direction is better than nothing at all mm -hmm. because I'm afraid of I'm, I'm doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. It's like, fuck that. Don't do that. Just get started and correct course as you go. Um, did I say something about 
Eating a cookie? Yes. What did I say? I'm talking about how eating a cookie late at night is oh. the same as just <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. bad decisions. <laughs> J. Ram said, did, did Kim say eat a cookie? I eat cookies by the sleep. KJ said, there's a wrong time to eat a cookie. <laughs> I was like, what did I talk about eating cookies? I think the time gets more wrong the older you get. Yeah. <laughs> Where all of a sudden... Anything past <laughs> seven is like, uh, maybe I shouldn't. I yeah. Mean... It's like now that we're in our 30s, it's like anytime you have a cookie, it's a roll of the dice. It's like, man, this is a genuine decision I'm making right now to eat this. <laughs> this I... is going to affect the course of my life. <laughs> I always forget how close my birthday is to Christmas because, like, all of a sudden my birthday is less than a month away. And mm. I'm like, oh, shit. Because um, I was talking to one of my friends and they were like, what are you going to do for your birthday? Maybe we can go out for your birthday. Or H Haley was asking and I was like, I don't know, but it's in like <laughs> a couple of weeks. <laughs> like, I know, right? I guess I should probably think about that. We're just so caught up in, like, doing Christmas stuff with our kids. Um... NFGI says, I love that. I, I hope Dave stops giving advice and just starts telling people he's better than, and they have no chance. <laughs> They'll be taken aback, but a small part of them will know it's true. <laughs> it's, it's, it becomes like, this isn't, a this isn't me saying I'm good or anything, but it becomes harder and harder to give advice the further I am from my starting point. Mm -hmm. It becomes more difficult to be like, how do you get here? And it's like, yeah, when God, it's becomes so second nature, far away. You forget how you learned. You're like, I just know it now because I do it every single day. But even so, even yes, but everything that you learn past a certain point is through like just years of experience working and Gosh, stuff. That just made me feel so empathetic for my parents teaching me how to drive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Victoria says, do you do these lives often? Is it for a set amount of time? We do them every Thursday. That's what we're aiming for. Yeah. Um, we're typically doing them, um, to promote the Patreon and to, um, you know, provide more content for our Patreon pa patrons, patrons, right? Um, that's what they're called. And <laughs> Not, I was going to say Patreon members, but that's not the right term, right? Patreonists. <laughs> Patreons. Yes. Um, yeah. So we're, so we're doing them every Thursday. That's what we're trying to do. Um, yeah, so if you Dave just subscribe like... to this channel, I make these public. So if you uh -huh. have this this Thursday stream is public, but... Not all of them are. Every Well, I was going to say everything else that's related to like tutorials and more specific content, that all goes directly to the Patreon. Mm. Um, Riley says the last mouse trap was so funny that I reached for a cop's gun. <laughs> 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 Have you guys seen that video of this guy, this young man who like murdered his Wait, God, I'm gonna say it. I'll tell you the story. I don't want you, you know to give away every about? part of it. Yes. Okay. So it's the best it's you're not gonna think this is funny potentially, but I think it's very funny. It's this video it's, where it's a guy sitting on the back of a pickup truck and there's a cop talking to him because they got called to a scene. And the guy, he's the only dude there. He's just this kid sitting there. He has like long hair. He's like mid twenties and he's kind of scraggly looking. He looks high, but um, he's talking to the police he just looks officer. Empty. Yeah, he's talking to the police officer and he's like, you know, we got called here. There's a disturbance at the home, whatever. Like, can you tell us anything about what happened, you know, to the old man who lives here? And yeah. then he's like, well, Is, and he goes like, oh, yeah, this is whatever. He's kind of like rambling. He's a little weird. And then the officer asks him again about whatever happened and, you know, what happened to the old man. He goes, oh, you mean like the, 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 this? And he like holds out his hands and in either hand there's just two ears. <laughs> <laughs> and he had ripped the ears off the old man's head. And the cops just like the suspect is holding ears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh so it progresses <laughs> and they go into the house and but there's still like a cop waiting with the guy. So the cop waiting with there's, the guy there's is two, right? Yeah, there's a dude in the house and then the cop with the dude mm. who had the ears. So the guy's still sitting there. And he's he just the, calm. By the way, he had the ears in his pocket. And he's just really calm. He's just sitting there. Yeah, so the he's sitting there and then the cop is kinda like just, just talking to him, trying to be real calm. And the, and the guy goes, 
<laughs> the suspect, he goes, can I, can I see your gun? <laughs> the cop's like, no, stay where you are. And he goes, <gasps> and he reaches for it to get <laughs> the cop's for it. And then the video ends. It's so fucking funny. <laughs> it's just real p- police footage, <laughs> like body cam. I fucking died. Goes, Him hey, having can ears. can I see your gun? <laughs> And then like we're buddies. <laughs> no. That is so fucking funny to me. And him just you having obviously just murdered somebody. two ears in his pocket. It's like, I I watched that video so many times. Uh, I was like, man. It's too much. That's very good. Um, um, I like want to do that to a cop so bad. So that's hey, what I imagine. see your gun? Th- that's, just, that, <laughs> was, that was Riley during our last mousetrap. He thought it was so funny that he just dove for a cop's gun. <laughs> No, I think what the best, it reminded me, it has the same feeling that uh, Bilbo has in Lord of the Rings when like he dives for the ring, he goes, give it to me, and he turns into a goblin <laughs> yes. monster for a second. <laughs> it was like that. I'd very it. much like to have that ring again, you know? And then he just, <laughs> <laughs> I fucking, I fucking died. Um, Chris Adoro says, thoughts on aspiring freelancers from outside of, outside the West. Uh, say Ghana, West Africa. Oddly specific. <laughs> Wait, say that again. Sorry. What are your thoughts on aspiring freelancers who are not? I'm guessing in like West, like the West, which is United States, Canada, North America. So uh, someone who's like in Ghana or West Africa. Ghana, West Africa. Um, I I actually know a few artists living in Africa and like Nigeria that are working. Um, not that that's the same exact place, and it's huge but i've just i just mean in terms of removal from what Mm -hmm. you imagine the industry being Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter like it honestly doesn't matter at this point everything's remote for the most part right if you have a way to get paid Mm -hmm. if you have some way for people to transfer funds to you then as long as you have the equipment and you can produce work then you can market yourself online and find stuff like you will be able to do that. And I think, especially when it comes to people who do feel like outsiders of the industry, that kind of community is super tight knit. Like I know that because I've seen it. Mm -hmm. Those people support each other a lot. Mm -hmm. So if everybody's in this space where they feel removed from everything, they tend to have each other's backs. So I think that if you can find people like you then you're going to find a community that will help support you know whatever you want to do mm-hmm. and you just have to take your career seriously you know and work really hard at it Nat- just like anybody else yes natka asks do you incorporate traditional mediums like pencil sketches into your workflow then import it to finish with digital color do you have any tutorials on that uh workflow in your patreon uh not that specifically but everything I do on Patreon, especially the stuff that's uh, Clip Studio oriented, where I have really tight, basically pencil drawings. Mm -hmm. All of that's the same application. And yes, sometimes Dave does use traditional mediums. I just don't always use it for work because it's slower Mm -hmm. to me. Like I do thumbnail sketches in my sketchbooks for the, like most of my jobs, but I I don't do a ton of finished drawings. I did a (laughs) few for, I worked on, um, uh, Wizards of the Coast, Lord of the Rings set, and I did a huge, well, the Magic the Gathering set. Mm -hmm. So I did a huge thing for them, and I did a bunch of cards and stuff, and all of those were drawn first, and then I I just took pictures of them, and then painted on top of them digitally. But that was just an experiment, because at the time, I was working on, like, concept art that was all drawn first and then put in the computer but i've kind of found better ways of doing that digitally so i I do that way less um porfirio porfidio sorry i tried at least you have a better initials than me which i don't know what that's in response to but um it's (laughs) (laughs) pu and mecca bouncy bunny says promptologist (laughs) yeah I hate it. I hate it so much. 
Um, Dave talking about how good stealing feels makes me want to use AI more than ever. <laughs> AI parallels calling yourself a character designer because you push tit size slider in an MMO. <laughs> True. Um, Chris also asks, Chris Aduro says, also a Patreon question, how do you grow and maintain a Patreon? I'm currently finding it very hard to maintain one. Well, we haven't really been growing for a while. Mm, it's probably I been mean, the we're, same for like... We're doing it, you know, we're, we're doing it more so like live here just to talk about it, you mm -hmm. know, just to be more relevant because if you don't push it all the time or, or have continual content come out, it is hard to have it, you know, grow over time or just create artwork that's, you know, relevant to whatever's going on culturally. But yeah, my advice when we were growing a lot, it was around me doing fan art and I, I kind of was only doing Patreon for a long time. Mm -hmm. But that was like your only job. Right, but now that we have other stuff going on, I have a job where I'm a concept artist, it's like I, I oh. work on Patreon, you know, a couple times a week stuff comes out, like two times a week at least, and then I mean, if this we're is, not able to do that, it's like a special circumstance. This is also why I even like exist in this space is because Dave started balancing a lot of other jobs and this is actually something that I can help with. Um, Chocolate Anime Girl, hey Dave, how do I get good at lighting? Just more studies? Yeah, make sure that you set up a decent reference. Like I used to buy bus off of uh, Amazon, just big uh, statues of breasts, and I would draw them. No, I had uh, <laughs> sculpts of like heads and things with like <laughs> pedestals at the bottom, and then I would. It's such a dry delivery. And I would set up just lighting around them in different situations and paint that from life. And I did that a lot, like multiple times a week for an hour at a time. And that really helped me. Great White Sufi asks, how do I get a job quicker assuming I'm at entry level skill already? Uh, if you're at a place where you feel you're ready, then I would say you just need to be in front of the right people. You need to actively be out in the world letting people know you're looking for work. Mm -hmm. Your work needs to be in front of artists that are a part of that, you know, art directors and things. But it also helps to know people. So don't just live in a vacuum where you never talk to artists, especially when you're starting out and you're not like, like, yes, you could be entry level concept artist, but an entry level concept artist isn't going to have a giant name on the internet potentially. So I think that if you're going to do that, that's going to depend on how you kind of have relationships within the industry. That's most of the people who are kind of still learning and growing and rising in the ranks within concept art. It's easier to do it when you have connections. Other artists you know who are working in a space who can recommend you for something. and. You get that by being a part of the community, being a part of discords, being a part of, you know, stuff like Twitter where you talk to other artists a lot, being in DMs and getting to know people, going to workshops, going to Lightbox Expo, etc. All those things are going to help you. Someone asked if you approve of the skull on my shirt. The misfits? Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, what, do you think that that's an evil looking skull? It has a very dead expression, mm -hmm. which I appreciate. Mm -hmm. um, Andres says, hey Dave, just out of curiosity, what do you think of the art of Ilya Kushinov? Is he good? Yes, very good. Danget Jock says, love your artwork. Thank you. Um, Raul Mercado says, Hey Dave, have you ever felt like you've been getting worse? I've been a professional designer for five years now, but this past year I felt like I'm forgetting everything and it's driving me insane. Uh, yeah, in, in certain in, in certain styles, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't do something enough and you favor one skill set over another, then one of those is gonna kind of weaken over time, unless you keep it up. That's why I'm doing stuff like this now. 
because I just haven't been doing a ton of realistic paintings. But I was just thinking like, man, I would love to do some, like I'd love to work for Diablo in some way or another. Like that was kind of my thought process when I started doing that like golem painting that I put up. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, it'd be cool to do some dark like fantasy things again, like I used to, like years ago. Like I did a bunch of that. Mm -hmm. And then I just kind of stopped and people stopped hiring me for that because it's not really relevant to anything I have in my portfolio. Yeah. And I was like, maybe I should just do a handful of paintings like that again and just kind of get the feel for doing like horror art and then work my way back into that universe and build that skill set. Because same thing, it's like I just stopped doing it. So that part of me became a little bit stagnant. But yeah. And that happens too if you just get <clears throat> kind of complacent in mm -hmm. what you're doing. If you're not working on difficult problems again, then you stop thinking about yeah. what you're doing. You're not challenging yourself, maybe. Yeah, I know that that happens to a lot of people. It's like you just become kind of comfortable doing something and, and comfort ends up killing everything, progress. My favorite quote from that unlikely source <laughs> is, your comfort zone is your coffin. Yeah. It's like, it's so good. It's such a good saying. Like, as soon as you're in your comfort zone, you're just going to die there. Like, you are, well, I mean, you're not going to, but you know, you can. You can let yourself die there. You're, it's easy. And you're not being challenged. And, I mean, I think the thing is, is as long as you're evaluating it and you're saying, like, hey, I'm forgetting what I'm doing, I'm like. Yeah, you're aware I, of it. You're not I naive. Think that's a huge part of it. Yeah, if it, if it bothers you to feel that way, then there's something you can do about it. Um, <clears throat> Cracky says, wow, you're so double-faced, Dave. You tell the non-Patreon people here to practice more in order to get better. But when you do Patreon streams, you tell us that you owe your success and growth to Alpha Brain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no otropics? Yeah, I, I do uh, neurotropics. I do... And True Male member enlargement pills. <laughs> of course, that's that's the main focus for me. Is I, I'm a huge member of Infowars. <laughs> I take gorilla pills, and that's what keeps me huge. Um, Fuzzy says I prefer Magna Carta. No, Magnanimous Patriarch rather than p Patron. Thank you. Please <laughs> honor my generosity with the appropriate degree of reverence. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, if you're going to make me read words like that, I'm just going to call you <laughs> <laughs> a dork. <laughs> yeah, Kim gets defensive when you start pointing out that she doesn't read. Yeah, stop putting big words, you little nerds. <laughs> Timothy L. <laughs> I try to argue with Dave. I was like, okay, indefatigable is not even a word, okay? <laughs> That person just put that there, and they were trying to trick me. <laughs> um, Timothy L. Law said, dude, that's pretty darn funny, though. Uh, About the dude with the ears uh, in yeah. his pocket. Yeah, yeah. Now I need the link to that video. It was on TikTok. I don't know. I, it was... I probably favorited it, but I don't remember uh -huh. what it is off the top of my head. And nobody else who was watching that video thought it was funny. So it's, <laughs> it's not like, in, like a comedy thing I can no. send to you. Um, Gab Gabo Lastico or Gabolo Stico. I'm not sure how to say your name. Sorry. Now I need, uh, no, he said, love your work, Dave. That's what I meant to say. Love your work, Dave. Oh, thank you. D says, hi, Dave and Kim. Big fan here. How yeah. do you go about licensed character prints? Do the IP owners commission you or do you seek them out for approval? Interested in getting into it in the future? Uh, sometimes I do official license, like the Castlevania artwork that I did with uh, Simon Belmont. It was like the big traditional Castlevania looking painting. That one was a licensed piece of artwork that I did for them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but I think because there's so many artists on platforms like Twitter and Instagram, selling fan art prints that it's just opened up where people don't really care mm -hmm. you can kind of just 
do it. I mean, like, it, I get that too because it's not bad for you. Like, you didn't make that print. You know, it's free publicity. Like, if people, like people, if they did that of Steve Lichman, like, I don't care. Mm -hmm. It's like I, it's not, it's not money that I'm missing. It's just going to the person who put in the effort on that thing. It's mm -hmm. like if they actually did put the effort in. It's fine. Came full circle. Yeah, they didn't steal it. <laughs> um, Enoch Vaughn says, Hey Dave, Kim, I have no problem sitting and sketching for fun, but I really struggle creating professionally. Uh, okay, so like for work, I guess you're, I'm guessing you have jobs or you're trying to get jobs, so maybe your portfolio. Any advice on how to take the pressure off of yourself when working commercially? That's that. I, I honestly think that comes from experience in the sense that you get more and more comfortable as you continue to work on stuff. I think that I definitely had that problem early on where I would mess myself up because I'd be so focused on like, oh, what are they gonna think about me? Am I good enough? Am I doing the thing that they think I'm capable of? Like, are they holding me to some other standard? Mm -hmm. One of the things that helped me was realizing that I'm. they hired me. So they hired me to be me. They're not hiring me because they want me to be better than my portfolio. They're hiring me because they saw what I can do and that's what they expect. So mm -hmm. it's not some mystery to them that like, oh, why aren't they better than this or whatever? Yeah. Like what happened? They know it's, what level of work to expect. Yeah, so you don't have to put so much pressure on. Just as much as you can, make believe it's something that you're just doing for you. Like that helps me quite a bit where I go, what what do I like about this? Like what's my in on this job? Like if, if the job doesn't immediately resonate with me from the start, like if I'm still kind of coming at it like, oh, I don't fully feel invested in this. It's like I find a way to feel really positive about the work so that it's something I want to do. And then that changes my, my mindset creating. <laughs> but if it's a thing where you feel pressure I would say just try to as much as possible remove yourself from that like negative self-talk thing and and try to remind yourself that they hired you and not somebody else they're not expecting somebody else um <clears throat> timothy elwell says mr davy boy how do you deal with burnout by sitting down and working through it <laughs> <laughs> i hate i hate that that's all the answers it's i mean this is a thing too like i go ah! <laughs> i just keep making stuff well but this isn't the first time you've been asked this and i'm not saying this to be like don't ask that question i'm saying this to be like everyone deals with it and everyone has their own way of dealing with it and we've been asked this before and and dave has a very non-conventional way of working with it so i don't know if he's the best person to talk to about burnout because He's a little, he's indefatigable. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, but he is not the right person probably to ask about burnout. You know, uh, a lot of, a lot of your peers deal with burnout too. I feel like other professions deal with burnout and it's just something that like everyone kind of deals with differently. I think I just think about it the same way somebody who's, you know, building a house or something like that. Like, I don't want to build a house today, mm -hmm. but it, I'm getting paid to. <laughs> so I'm just going to do I'm it. I'm going to do it, yeah. Because it's my responsibility. Like, I just feel that way about art. I just feel like I'd be doing myself a disservice and my client a disservice if I didn't give my best, regardless of how I feel mm -hmm. at the moment. Because, you know, uh, like I said, it's like when, like, or we've talked about this in previous streams but when i go on like vacation i don't draw at all mm -hmm. like i don't just you know i like i think about it as work as much as i enjoy the process i still think about it as a responsibility so it's, it's not like i i don't know feel like i need to be doing something else or whatever mm -hmm. does that make any sense yeah i mean i it, it makes sense to me because i know you but it might be vague to somebody who doesn't really understand your outlook um riley's going to sleep and he said uh have a good one gamers 
Later, Riley. I mm -hmm. hope Santa gets you everything you asked for. <laughs> um, Fuzzy says, can't wait to write off my titty statues as business <laughs> expenses. Um, you can. <laughs> can Dave click through the layers? Uh, sure. <laughs> can you imagine just people buying those, like, robot, um, like, sex doll things and being like, it's for reference, it's for art. Isn't it? it was a business expense. <laughs> I need something realistic. <laughs> so if you see here, this is this is what I've done on the stream so far. The on and off. I'm just painting over the sketch. So yeah, you can look at that. Um, just trying to keep the lighting subtle, and then I'll click through the rest of these. Have you seen Maxim Verhin's Diablo stuff? It's amazing, and he's one of my favorite concept artists. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I have. This is the basic sketch here that I did. I didn't even really have a plan going into this, so it's not my favorite sketch. It's just me playing with my process. I will so, yeah. show Dave. I have a tab open with that so that we can look at it. Um. Is dick size directly correlated to art skill? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shay's now you says, just have to figure out if I hate myself or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shay says, hey, Dave and Kim, do you feel um, MTG art got worse lately or is it just me? Also, League of Legends splash art. Uh, I don't know. I mean, that that's a... That's kind of a reflection of a ton of different variables. So it's just depending on you, really. It's like, what do you feel about it? Mm -hmm. like, I don't really look at a lot of Magic the Gathering artwork, and I'm not familiar at all with like League splash art, like in the sense that I keep up with it in any way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. Um, it could be a pay thing. I mean, if, like, if you ever feel that way, it's like sometimes, not saying this is the case with magic, I just mean in a general way. Like sometimes it's the case that artists that have worked for a long time for these places either move on or they're in this weird like limbo period or the pay is not good enough or whatever. There's a million different reasons for anything to take a hit. But that doesn't mean that the artists working on it are bad. Mm -hmm. or that artists that were previously putting in a ton of hours are doing less. It's mm -hmm. like, that's an artist-to-artist -artist thing as much as it is a company thing. Um, we're going to do 10 more minutes, and then we're going to hop off. Um, so this says, sorry for all the questions, but have you ever thought about doing splash art for companies like Riot? It would be interesting to see what you do with that stuff. I did, early on, I did a bunch of Riot work. I did a... Nocturne, and I uh, did, um, what's his face, Garen. I did one of that girl with the bear, and I did one of Timo. Mm -hmm. And I did a bunch of like, they didn't end up, I can't, I guess I can't really talk about why I did that, because it was part of this specific thing that they hired me for. But um, they ended up using it to sell prints. Of, it was like in their store for a while, because it was just kind of off, brand a little bit for them like I went more like heavily into realism and textures and stuff mm -hmm. you did Garen too yeah did you say that yeah um Mr. Ken says sauna cold showers cardio and diet all help me with burnout that's my big four yeah I think I think it's helpful that you share that too because I think that you'll find that a lot of people have similar things to help with burnout and some people are like I didn't think about that maybe I should try that um, so I appreciate you sharing that Jose uh, Vinicius wait I'll, I want to say this before we get off of that mm -hmm. just just to give you perspective on like my attitude towards burnout I've literally openly wept while working on stuff <laughs> and just <laughs> so it's not Actually. like I don't burn out or like burnout in the sense that like you call it burnout. I just keep doing stuff unhealthily. Yeah. So like 
That's why I said that he's not a good person to ask about that stuff because. Yeah, like I, I've had, like I don't even know that I am crying. Mm -hmm. Like back, like whenever that's happened to me, it's just, it's just like a my body's natural reaction to stress. <laughs> so I just be crying crazy tears, and I'm just like, well, I'm working on a comic. Like what's <laughs> happening to me? Like why am I, why am I losing my mind? Because I'm burnt out and I keep making myself do stuff when I should stop. God, I remember going through nursing school and working full time and being pregnant. I cried a lot. I think you and I handle stress the same way. Yeah. We just cried and then we just kept doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why we're, you know, married. And tomorrow's a new day. That's the whole thing, we you know? Legitimi we legitimize each other. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it's unhealthy. We and wrong. legitimize each other and we also push each other. So it's like, oh, well. Yeah. You're still going. You're obviously stressed out. Um, Great White Sufi says, okay, Dave, what's the worst job you've been on? Like one where the client just told you to chuck off because they were upset for any reason. Um, ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let me think about that for a second. What's I don't the think worst anyone's one? ever really just like done that to you. I not, not recently. It would have to, I'd have to go way back. I'd have to go back to the early days. Mm -hmm. If I go way, way back to when I started, there's definitely projects where I'd be working on a thing and it would be just like outlandish things. Like people who just have no idea what they're doing. Like those, those types of jobs, they're not that common. And Whenever that happened to me, I just kind of like rolled with it. I was like, I don't want to cause it. Like, ob like if I caused any more friction than there currently was just from their absence of an idea and iterating on the same thing over and over again, I'd just mm -hmm. be making it even harder. So I just would, I would just muscle through that job and try to forget it because it was like not worth the fight, not worth anything. So I'd just be like, this person's kind of crazy. Like, if it was like a picture of them in any way, like, oh, this character's a parallel of me, and then they hire you to do something based off of that, mm -hmm. it's like those jobs are always hell, especially early. It's like, if they have any kind of personal investment in it, or if it's even like a story that the person's trying to create characters for, and they've written these characters in their narrative mm -hmm. and they're expecting to see them from an artist those are the worst jobs in general there are outliers where like oh that's pretty good but in general those were kind of like that's like a minefield because they already have everything in their head of exactly what they want to see they don't know how to tell you what they want to see and they're never satisfied yeah never it's, it won't be good enough it yeah. won't measure to their vision because they've lived with it for too long. Mm -hmm. So that type of job is probably the worst, in my opinion. Like, across the board. Like, I did a bunch of those when I started up. Yeah. Those were always the hardest. The best jobs are the ones where it's like Riot, where they trust you know, this you isn't either. my game. <laughs> like, yeah. like, I didn't make legal. Like, they, it's much more open to, like, artistic interpretation because mm -hmm. you have less people that are directly linked to the source. Mm -hmm. It's like they're not so invested where they're feeling like super controlling. Mm -hmm. Like it's not a small team where they feel There's... like they need to take every part of what you're doing and make it their version of perfect. There's an element of trust. There's an element of like, I trust that I hired the right person for this job and that the person that I hired has a good sense of design, yeah. good sense of taste, whatever it may be. Fuzzy says, sweet, my art skill is 13.7 inches. <laughs> um, uh, Ian says, hey, hey, Kim and Dave, was late to the stream tonight. Just wanted to say happy holidays and thanks for the tutorials on Patreon. Happy holidays. Yeah, happy holidays. We'll see you next Thursday for a mousetrap. Um, let's see. Uh, Keenan Forsberg says, hey, Dave, just realized I hate transferring brush settings and would rather just work with something that can change brush to brush. What's something you're like, why did I put myself through this? That changes brush to brush? Mm-hmm. Where is that? 
Kanan Forsberg says that. I probably can't see it on my end. Hey Dave, I just realized I hate transfer in brush settings. Transfer in brush settings. Uh huh. And would rather work on something. Uh, and would rather just work with something that can change brush to brush. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> What's something you're like? Look, I, don't, I don't. This to I me is relate. like a foreign language, so I don't. I like also... I kind of get what you're saying, but at the same time, I don't. <laughs> Like this question I think means you just nothing hit, to me. I think you just hit my blind spot. <laughs> <laughs> Where I'm just staring at Kim like. Do you want me to translate? Because I I'm using a chalk brush right now. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, have I don't no even idea know what you're talking you. about. I get it. I don't know what you're talking about. When Dave and I first started dating, I accidentally said, and it came out like such an insult. Like I was trying to be mean. I was like. Are you coloring? Because I was <laughs> trying to say like, like you're done paint, you're done drawing the image. Are you putting color on it? But I said, are you coloring? And it, he was like, that just sounded like you're trying to insult me so bad. Because <laughs> <sighs> I didn't want to seem like I was trying to be like all art like and be like, are you laying down the colors <laughs> or what the values? Like as if I knew any of these terms, I said, are you coloring? And it just came across <laughs> as a huge insult. <laughs> Llama head says, I love you guys. <laughs> um, Dave and Kim, do you guys ever fight and how do you get through it? Yeah, we fight. Yeah. I mean, it, like anybody else. Mm -hmm. No, just, not just... like anybody else. I've been in relationships where we fight. Well, I just and it, mean you don't everybody work fights. Oh yeah. I was going to say it, we don't, we fight exactly like everybody else. <laughs> I think that's what Kim literally took my statement as. We, You know somebody that you know? We're exactly like them. I know you don't know who we're talking about. You but... know your mom and dad who got divorced? <laughs> we're them. We fight like them. I'm your mom and dad. <laughs> no, we just, you know. How do we get through it? I feel like. Just talk a lot. Yeah. Uh, Dave and I have very different ways of handling things. When I get overwhelmed, I don't want to say something I regret and I need to step away. And Dave's like, we're not going to stop talking until we work through this. And I'm <laughs> like, which is good because we should work through it and we should talk about it. But I always need to like take a pause because I'm like, I know myself. I know that I have a temper. I know that I can like, I mean, my own dad called me a bitch. Like <laughs> if that tells you anything. So I know that I can be like hot headed and Oh, she's making herself sound worse than she is. She's well, not like that. I just know that I can have, I can let things get to me and I don't want it to. So I have a hyper awareness of trying to control that and and not let my, myself say something that and I, I also, don't need to say. I also try to be better about not just overwhelming Kim with my thing of like trying to fix it. Mm -hmm. Or trying to like just be, you know, regular in a conversation right after yeah. a fight. Like, cause I can go from hot to fine in like two seconds. Like, yeah. I, I can go from like, oh, I was just mad. Now I'm totally fine. Yeah. Let's just talk normal. But I try to try to be cognizant of that and not be like, mm -hmm. hey, I know that you don't want to do this, but I want to. Yeah. And I, this is the thing. Like, it's not that I don't want to resolve it. It's that like is too fresh kind of yeah. or i just like the the other thing that happens is like i feel like we a lot of couples have the same fight like it'll be the same topic yeah and it's just that like building up point and then it's like that reminder of like oh yeah this thing still bothers me and i, I think that's fine i i think that's probably going to be we're probably going to have the same fight for the next 20 years which is fine it's yeah, not it's anything normal. that's like it's not like a make or break kind of fight either. Um, I do think that like... It's it's my porn addiction, I can't stop. <laughs> yeah, it's not a make or break it for me because, you know, he's just gonna get older, it's fine. <laughs> he can do whatever he wants. Um, no, I just think that... I think that we respect each other enough and we also hate ourselves enough to never be like too hard on each other. Oh, yeah. That's the biggest thing in our relationship that makes it a very healthy relationship, <laughs> which sounds dumb because I'm sure there are plenty of people who are like, that's not healthy to hate yourself that much. But we both hate ourselves the same amount. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. and we don't hate each other. We like love each other so much 
for better, for worse. Yeah, we adore each other. We we are very, um, you know, we like worship each other in in uh -huh. a very healthy way. <laughs> Uh, I like, this is funny, drawing through a mental breakdown, mood. The <laughs> objective is more important than self-preservation, which is you working through anything. Crying and eating at the same time is the funniest, saddest combo, though. I think crying and eating is 10 million times better than crying and then reaching for your phone and recording yourself. So That's the wildest <laughs> that, trend of the last that might be century. <laughs> the saddest combo Just being and like, funniest. I'm feeling like I'm gonna cry. Let's imagine? record this. Somehow, somehow my ego is still intact enough to be like, yeah. I, st I, I even love this part. I know. <laughs> I even think everybody should see this part. Never oh. mind when I'm feeling good. I want the world to tell me I'm better than this. Hey, you're gonna get through it. Yeah. Those people are out of their fucking minds. It's the same people who take pictures, like selfies in the ER when they're family members dying yeah it's like that same level where you're like what the fuck I go, oh that's a that's a private moment that's a private moment <laughs> the hospital and the crying i mean i i have i like whenever i see any of that stuff i'm like Phew. like even people who think like chadwick uh bozeman bozeman uh -huh. how do you say his name bozeman that dude he was black panther like when people talk about like the black panther died instead of like the, the human person? being <laughs> who had like a real family and stuff like even that a stuff to me is so up to that role it's so weird to yeah. me of like oh man like people are so dis disillusioned and crazy that they like think this stuff is real it's that dave Chappelle joke of uh you know like back in the 80s like they didn't do you know Five 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 on the phone. Mm -hmm. Like then all the movies started doing fake phone numbers mm -hmm. because people would try to call like Indiana Jones. But like, yeah. hello, is Indiana Jones there? They'd be like, he's not real. It's like he's I feel that really same way. Phone number. About that, like you know, Black Panther's gone thing. I'm like, I get it, but he has a family. <laughs> <laughs> it's very real that he's dead. Mm -hmm. like, um, crying does nothing. Only actions can change your life. Tell that to the girl who cries and gets free stuff. Tell that to the girl. <laughs> it's true. Unfortunately. Um, do you look at the old masters often for inspiration? If so, who's your favorite old masters? Uh, I have Waterhouse, Celia Reppin, um, Rembrandt. There's a bunch. But I don't always go back and look at old masters just try to do what I like to do I look at a lot of current artists mostly as I think like going back to that it's all contextual like that stuff during the time like what was expected of you and what kind of your purpose as an artist was in your community or you know mm -hmm. before photography before whatever it's like uh, it's just different. Um, there's a video on Dan's channel called Freelance Talks, Getting Through the Middle. It's hilariously dark and has helped me through some tough times. Thanks, Dave and Dan. Yeah, of course. That's one that we hear a lot about. Like, that comes up every so often. It's an old video. Lama has says, my wife pauses for days and I want to talk through it, but she needs a pause, so I empathize with Dave on this. Um, I mean, I don't pause for days. That's, it's never we're, we've never gone days with like the no, an unresolved. We don't even go like an hour. Night or yeah, anything. like, like it's like maybe an hour max. It's just like time out, you know. Um, Kim being very careful, she doesn't end up like Amy. Smart move. May I remind you, <laughs> I am from the hood. <laughs> <laughs> I have. Yeah, Kim. Kim may look sweet. But she's, you know, she's dangerous. There's, um, I mean, I'm not dangerous, but I think that there is an understatement of, kill. like, I'm a very happy person, and I'm a very, like, I laugh a lot. <laughs> I just laugh a lot, so it comes across as really happy, but I think that... Kim has stories of her being in a car, hiding under the dash while like hiding her face while a bunch of her friends get out of the car and beat somebody up with crowbars and baseball bats 
Huh. So it's not like Kim Kim has been in the world. <laughs> I've been in the world a little bit. I also think that I'm in a situation in this relationship where it's healthy enough that I don't have to resort to those things. <laughs> but like <laughs> don't have to resort. There's not a lot of situations where you have to re like that's more of a character flaw <laughs> of the people beating the person down. I'm not going to no. It's uh -uh. not justice no way. all the time. I was, <laughs> I was in a relationship and there's there's just certain people that will push your buttons and they know how to push your buttons. Yes, but you don't then beat them to death with it. Uh, he, he's still very much alive. I was close, though. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. It's like, you never push me to that point either. You're never, like, trying to get a rise Where you're about me. to break. <laughs> yeah. But exactly. You knew exactly where I was going with that. <laughs> but I'm just saying. You never hit your Chester cheated moment. Yeah. You're yep. going to snap. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know the painting by Adolf Hiramy Herschel, Souls on the Banks of the Archeron? Ar yeah. What do you think of it? Awesome. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you are forgiving of each other, each other's flaws because you have your own. That's awesome. I think that's a very nice way of putting it. I mean, we're, I mean, just in our past relationships and everything, like what we have is compared to everything else, it's very easy. It's like we're as Absolutely. compatible as like, at least we can imagine. Yeah, uh, yeah. In the world, there's no one else for me. That's it. <laughs> When they're talking about the relationship, it sounds like they're in a cult to each other. <laughs> That's a marriage, dude. That's what Lama had said. I mean, yeah, we have, you know, I, yeah. things that bind us together. We, but a healthy... we had a whole ceremony about it. It's pretty cultish. <laughs> yeah. We prayed to uh, some god that you only find in yeah, weird Olmec. witchcraft books. <laughs> Olmec to Kulik. No, I do think that... I think that... It's very, what we have is very rare. I feel very fortunate to have what we have. And I would never jeopardize that by like saying the wrong thing or pushing an argument that's not worth it too far, you know? Yeah. It's not worth it. Um, but you know, I think when you're not in a relationship where you're like super happy, you kind of just go there. You're just like, let's see how far this can go. Let's just keep pushing it until it breaks because I'm not really happy anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not a very argumentative person in general. I just kind of no. am like, I'm, like if somebody's like really pushing it to the point where they're, it's almost like a game or something. Or it's Not like a game, but a it's sense. kind of like, okay, well, I'm not super happy anyway, so I'll just let all of that out oh, right, right now. Oh, right, you just or, don't care. Yeah, you're just like, oh, whatever, I don't give a shit. Like, I'm not super happy anyway, so I'm going to let this other thing, like, really bother me, and then we're just going to be like, and guess what else? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, there is a certain aspect of a fight that's enjoyable. <laughs> Someone... Cathartic. I think I've said this before, but I... I, in a past relationship someone said I don't like arguing with you because you're always right and I said why would I be arguing with you if I didn't think I was right if I didn't have a point to make then I would just shut up and be like yeah you're right <laughs> if I was definitely wrong I wouldn't sit here and waste my breath <laughs> what is that point that doesn't make any sense <laughs> yeah then don't argue with me <laughs> if you're wrong why are we arguing <laughs> This is the dumbest comment I've ever heard. I'm going to be so sad when Mr. Delicious inevitably dies from autoerotic asphyxi asphyxiation. I hope so. <laughs> I hope it was staged. <laughs> I hope I was murdered. It's a big mystery. Um, and I they find out that I fake staged my own. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Kim might be from the hood, but Dave was hunting snakes instead of being in school. No, I mean, look, Dave has a lot of street smarts, but I can hold my own. That's a stupid one to say. <laughs> and I don't believe it. 
Have, have you ever stabbed someone? I was delivered without too? enough confidence. Huh? It didn't sound cool enough. <laughs> I know. My little voice doesn't really help. <laughs> I guess someone has to ask, have, have you ever stabbed someone, Kim? I've never... I've never stabbed anyone. <laughs> <laughs> that was too long. <laughs> that was way too long. Why'd you have to work that out? I know. Because You've definitely I've stabbed someone. No, I've never stabbed someone. <laughs> You've stabbed someone. You I've definitely never, have. Never nobody, stabbed. nobody waits that long. Ask me if I've ever stabbed anybody. <laughs> have you ever stabbed? No, I have not. That's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> because I have access to my memory. <laughs> I would remember a traumatic event like that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if I stabbed somebody, I probably would have blocked it out, right? So I, I had to think, and I, I have it. I have not. I have it. <laughs> I haven't stabbed anybody. Hmm. Does that count as a stabbing? A stick <laughs> in your head. Hmm. You know what's really funny about the two of us? We've both pulled out knives on our brothers. <laughs> that's true actually <laughs> and this is like a I good 20 years young. before we met <laughs> yeah I was incredibly young yeah I was pretty young too my brother had to fight me off <laughs> I don't even remember this so that's how long ago it no, was no I remember yeah I didn't stab him though <laughs> <laughs> um it's good to know you can build a relationship on self-hatred because that's all I have to offer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does, D Dave, does the hat always stay on, even in uh, the shower? Yeah, in the shower, <laughs> everywhere else. It's just on constantly. It's like my <laughs> Doug Funny outfit. Didn't it's my cartoon everybody. costume. Didn't I? Did I stab my cousin with a fork once? No, I don't think so. Did you? No, I I don't know who I would have. No, it's possible. All my cousins did not get along really well. Um, one thing. <laughs> Kim, have you have you ever stabbed someone? Kim casually proceeds to take ears out of her pocket. <laughs> 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 These? Give me your gun. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to say I've stabbed myself by accident. I had. A, a switchblade that I got from a fair, and I was like, "This is awesome!" It was like a little, so you have little black, somebody. little black market like Yourself. table, and um, I went out of state to get it because it was illegal in the state I lived in. I I just wanted a switchblade. I grew up watching '80s movies. I loved it. I was like, "It's so cool!" And then I bought one, and I was playing with it, and I was twirling it. I I had like a ton of knives as a kid and bow and arrow. Like I grew up around weapons and things because I just liked being in the woods a lot. And uh, <laughs> I was at my friend's dorm playing with it and I was spinning it around my finger and then I was tossing it between my hands and I spun it around and it shot off and it just went through my hand. <laughs> 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 and I just yeah. took it out and then I just bandaged it and I never got it healed. I mean, I never got it uh, stitched up or nothing. So it just never really healed that mm -hmm. great. So I just have this weird new line in my hand mm -hmm. where like all these new, you know, like the wrinkles Palm you leaders. have yeah the folds yeah it's like i have this weird conversion of a bunch of lines in one spot and that's where the knife went in that's the only <laughs> time i've stabbed anybody about the bat story did he deserve it the bat story the baseball bat and crowbar story. It, there was no baseball bats it was just a it was tire a iron tire iron and a crowbar okay i couldn't remember uh you know what i'm I guess I don't know. I don't know the guy. I it was like I just happened to be in the car and it, and it was an ex boyfriend in high school, and um, one of his friends was the one who was like, "Don't look. This is gonna get really violent. Don't look." My my own boyfriend didn't give a shit. He was just like, "Whatever," and then um, they went and beat him up. But it had something to do with like this guy doing something to somebody's sister. So. Could have been an R word. Not that one. <laughs> Be careful. A P E. <laughs> yeah, the one that you can't say. Yeah, and so I think that something ha I don't you know. Can't say either of those R words. 
What am I doing? Can't say any of those. It's the one that you can't say. You could say the other one as yeah. much as you want. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Pretty sure if you don't remember assaulting someone, it doesn't count. I think that is the law. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. So, Your Honor, I don't who, remember who blackout drunk <laughs> just <laughs> kill somebody. Is that you on that tape? Your Honor, I don't remember. <laughs> you hit somebody with your car, hit and run. You were drunk. Yeah, exactly. I don't remember. Therefore, well, it wasn't me. <laughs> it's a wash. <laughs> Obviously, I contain my memories. So uh, who was that? <laughs> J Ram says, no wonder Kim's brother lives with her parents. She turned him into a vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a couch potato. That's what I turned him into. <laughs> um... You guys want to hear something really dark and then we can just end the stream? I had a memory. I had a dark, like a weird dream that triggered a memory. And I think I was roofied once. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> that like... is dark. I mean, that's a good way to end the stream. Yeah. <laughs> end, it, end it on a I was roofied story. Nothing happened to me. I'm fine. But it ha I'm pretty sure I was roofied. That's so scary. Yeah. Like terrifying not having any control memory nothing i think this is the thing i think i just was so unaware and i think that i was not unaware of like my surround like i was so unaware that that could happen to me that i didn't even think of it as a possibility until like 12 years later like that's how long ago it happened hmm like, I don't even think it crossed my mind. I just thought that I was being reckless and drank too much. Right, and then you're like, that's not a normal yeah. reaction, and I've never experienced it since. Never since, never before that. Yeah, it was like a weird, like, tr some something triggered my memory in this dream, and I was like, whoa, I remember that night. And I was like, wow, I'm not drinking again like that. I need to be more careful. I was really drunk. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> mm. I've never been roofied, but I have gotten close to that where I had nine Long Island iced teas <laughs> back to back. That's not close. And then I went to another planet, and I don't remember where I went. <laughs> um, Mr. Swash said, been a huge fan of yours since Crimson Dagger days. Just want to say how awesome it is to see your style evolved. Oh, thank you. Also, on the Switchblades real quick, mm. moving Dave to... Colorado I flew out there and mind you we had our first date was Halloween we were moving in together January 14th like that's not a lot of time right and I don't I just must have had so much trust for you and like I just must have really felt that this was right because we were packing your boxes and I just see blade after blade <laughs> after blade after blade <laughs> and I'd look at Kim and, and I'd be like whip and a <laughs> I go this place is really dangerous the area I live in there's actually been a lot of people who go into random house parties and yeah. stab people <laughs> and then she goes through my stuff there's just tons of knives we really gotta move and fast yeah oh. where do you live Oh, and I'll then move I, there. And then I'm like, all this stuff is going in the I don't trash? Have, we don't need this? I don't have any connection to this place anymore. In Why? fact, I need to be the furthest from this place you don't, as possible. You don't need this bed anymore? We'll just get a new one. What, you don't need the, like these things that seem like a lot of furniture. We're just going to throw this away? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> like All these red flags. Look, it's fine. It worked out. The other day, we celebrated nine years of being together. Yeah, and I stopped drifting a long time ago. <laughs> JRAM is at the end of the story. Pretty much because when you get roofied, you have a gap in your memory. <laughs> I can tell you where it started, and I can tell you where it ended. That's about it. Um, good thing I had friends taking care of me. That's all I got to say. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. The, the you kids want to hear something dark? This is definitely a Dave and Kim stream. <laughs> <laughs> nice bedtime story, bro. <laughs> Just, hey, I got a cool one to end the stream on. <laughs> the, the, creature is, the creature, in contrast to these stories, feels t real tame now. <laughs> Dave packs ears after ear to after ear. <laughs> Starting to get troubled about all the jokes Dave 
tells about killing Dan. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, my takeaway from this story is to always trust dangerous men. Absolutely. Right. And on that note, in Dave we trust. Yeah, if you want to uh, take part in the Patreon, watch a bunch of other videos, a bunch of tutorial things. A lot of process has been going up recently because I've been trying to focus more on this type of work where I'm pushing my style back to like older stuff that I used to do. Um, I'm, I've been putting up process for that reason because I'm just kind of like exploring that. And then uh, we have regular tutorial videos. We have these streams, obviously, mm -hmm. as well as hundreds of hours of stuff from the past two years. As well as Discord challenges, which is uh -huh. a big thing for the community to get involved with each other. They talk. There's lots of conversations going on, not just like art challenges. Um, it's nice. And a lot of people who are asking, like, how do you get a job? I mean, we have like over 1,200 uh, people in the Discord. There's a lot of people in the Discord. I can't remember the number. But um, there's a lot of, like, people getting connections. And I think there have been people getting jobs through that, too. Um, eventually, we'll return to doing portfolio reviews. So if you guys want to join. Yeah, that's happening in the new year. Mm-hmm. So that'll be normal again. But, yeah. If you want to take part, you got a couple days left in December to make your goblin for yes. the discord challenge and we'll be doing review stream of those goblins also to those who are not patrons if you guys join um it's five dollars everything from the last two years is available dave's working on like an archive glossary index kind of thing so that you can kind of navigate that because it's a lot of content and um he did change it so that you're not charged when you join and the first of the month it's when you join and then that starts your monthly subscription yeah so because that was a weird thing that they did yeah the fact that that wasn't just a part of it from the beginning like that was a new feature that patreon added which is like so strange because mm -hmm. that just pushes people away when they're like what the fuck i'm getting charged again i just joined i joined yeah like if you joined today you would have been getting charged again in like a week or something which is silly yeah it's really dumb um and that's that thanks for guys for coming to the stream guys yeah, and uh, before I hop off, I'll do a little before and after of what we've been working on. So here's where we started the stream at, and here's where we're at now. Get a little closer to into this monster face. Get up close. All right. So here's where we started. Here's where we are currently. Turn those on and off. Yeah. So we'll do more streams. There'll be another one next Thursday and every Thursday. Next Thursday is not a regular stream. It is a mousetrap stream. Dan will be will be joining us for that. Mm -hmm. And if you just want to hang out and watch streams and you don't care about Patreon, you can just subscribe to this channel and you'll get notifications when the next stream is scheduled. Also, get your edibles because we're going to have a lot of fun next week. Yeah, we're going to get... We're going to get blasted and try to <laughs> try to draw Jerry Seinfeld with your left hand <laughs> using a mouse. It's going to be devastating. Track for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much for all the questions. Hope you have a happy holiday. And um, if Santa doesn't get you everything you want. Maybe. Fuck him. You should just take it. Yeah. Yeah. You should just take it. Listen. Listen to the prompters. They're right on this one. If you don't get everything you want, you take it. <laughs> Fuck everybody.